Can floating solar farms solve the energy crisis? Have you ever heard of floating solar farms? In recent years, such structures have become more and more popular, and some experts even say that in the future they will completely replace traditional solar panels. Floating solar farms generate more electricity than conventional panels while helping to prevent climate change. The authorities of some countries have already announced several mega-projects for their construction. Will they be able to solve the global energy crisis, and how are they arranged in general? Let's figure it out. The potential of solar energy in the world is estimated at 80 petawatts, which is three times more than all the needs of mankind today. However, in order to use it fully, humanity will need to cover the entire Earth's surface with solar panels, and this means that we need to donate fertile land and meadows for grazing, not to mention the complete disappearance of territories with wild animals. An additional problem is global warming. With the advent of regular measurements of the temperature of the lakes in 1985, Scientists have found that the indicator has been growing every 10 years by 1.2 degrees. Such a rapid change in the heat of water leads to the growth of algae, a decrease in oxygen at depth, and subsequent death of aquatic animals. Solar floating power plants have become the solution to these problems. These structures are almost ordinary solar panels, known to all inhabitants of the planet. However, they are located only on lakes and reservoirs. Any strong vibration of waves can lead to their breakage, hence the reason the designers are not ready to install them in the seas and oceans. However, the efficiency of such plants is much higher than their terrestrial counterparts. Recent studies have shown that this technology generates more electricity on average by 12.5%. This dramatic increase in efficiency factor is due to the cooling effect of the water under the floating farm. Many companies have already been able to assess their effectiveness. Recently, there are more and more floating solar farm projects in different countries of the world. And this trend is good news. Singapore is a prime example of the construction of a powerful floating solar farm. The island state has very little territory, so the state is permitted to build a floating farm on the Tengiz Reservoir. More than 122,000 floating panels cover an area of 45 hectares, or 45 football fields. They float on peculiar polyethylene pillows which provide protection against corrosion and local living creatures. The panels are located with large gaps so as not to completely block the lake from sunlight and air. Drones control the serviceability. This will reduce the work of staff by 30%. In the event of a malfunction, a team of repairmen sails to a specific area on ships and repair equipment. The total capacity of this facility is only 60 megawatt power and was put into operation in the summer of 2021. As noted by Wong Kim Ying, the group president and CEO of SEMCORP Industries, the SEMCORP Tenge floating solar farm is a crown jewel in our portfolio and a showcase for Singapore. As the leading homegrown renewable energy player, SEMCORP has over 3,300 megawatts of renewable energy assets around the world. We are committed and have the track record and competencies to support the Singapore Green Plan. A more powerful version of the floating solar farm is located in Anhui Province, China. The Three Gorges New Energy Company, local company, found the lake which appeared as a result of the flooding of the mine. The stagnant water has become a perfect site for a 150 megawatt power floating farm. An additional difference from the Singapore station is that fisheries were organized with the help of a solar farm. The Chinese often try to get all kinds of benefits from each facility. The total cost of the construction was $151 million. By the way, it is in this province that another floating solar farm with a capacity of 40 megawatt power is located. However, the most powerful floating solar farm is located in another Chinese province, Zhejiang. Taking into account the experience of its competitors, the Huangzhou Fengling Chinese company has relied on two types of business at once, power generation and aquaculture development. The project was divided into two phases. The first phase involved the installation of solar panels with a total capacity of 200 megawatt power. The work was completed in 2017 and the company already then began to receive the first profit from the project. The second phase involved the construction of solar panels with a total capacity of 120 megawatt power, 
which began almost immediately and was completed only in April 2020. All panels and inverters, machines for converting the received DC into AC alternate current, have been equipped with additional protection against moisture and dirt. The new plant generates cheap electricity at 12 cents per kilowatt hour, cheaper than a traditional solar panel. A fish breeding area is organized under the panels. According to Tammy Tang, the marketing manager in the K-Star Farm Equipment Manager, the 320 megawatt plant has an expected annual generation of 352 million kilowatt hours. The annual revenue from the generated electricity for the owner of the plant is about $45 million. While the annual fishery income can reach nearly $5 million, the structure also solves environmental problems. The panels prevent moisture evaporation and reduce the heating temperature of the water, thereby preserving the aquatic life. Seeing impressive achievements, many countries are also actively promoting the construction of such mega projects. Smaller floating solar projects have already been deployed in Switzerland, the Netherlands and other countries. But in India, they are eager to bypass the Chinese and build a twice as powerful farm, 600 megawatt power. The project is estimated at $410 million and so far there is only preliminary preparation for it. South Korea decided to go even further. The authorities announced the construction of a floating solar farm with a capacity of 2.1 gigawatt power. The cost of such a mega project is estimated at $3.9 billion. Construction has already begun. The first stage with a capacity of 0.5 gigawatt power has already begun in July 2020. India and South Korea are expected to complete their mega projects by 2023. It is likely that by this time, scientists will have found safe ways to place floating farms in the seas and oceans. What do you think about this? Are India and Korea able to overtake China's technological advancements at once? Will there be entire islands of solar panels in the future? Please share your opinion in the comments below. See you!